Neil Hamilton. Uh, perhaps I, I'll try and calm things down in a little of my usual way. But uh, I, I would like to uh, thank the C Cabinet Secretary for the courtesy that he has shown, he has shown in, 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 to me also in telling me the broad outlines of the statement this afternoon when we spoke this morning. And I agree, agree with uh, my new neighbour, uh, Adam Price. Uh, I, don't, I don't know whether I should now call him my honourable friend or, or whether... <laughs> Dear neighbour, um, the, there is a kind of cordon sanitaire between us, in the form of Simon, Simon Thomas. And but I'm delighted to join my fellow nationalists anyway, on this side of the uh, of the chamber. But, but, uh, <laughs> Stick to but, the uh, subject. I agree, I agree with the. Uh, with the point which uh, Adam Price made with such passion a moment ago, that it is right for parties in this House to work together for the benefit of Wales. So I was a bit surprised, uh, actually, when the Cabinet Secretary did ring me this morning, because on the radio on Sunday morning, he said he has little limited contact with the Conservatives and can't ever imagine having conversations with UKIP. So uh, anyway, it's very, I'm very pleased to see that he's recanted within a couple of days from that uh, rather extreme opinion. But uh, um, this debate, to an extent, is one of shadow boxing, because although I, I appreciate that uh, the deal that Plaid Cymru have done with Labour have enabled them to make a real contribution to this budget in detail, 500 odd million pounds is not an insignificant sum, but the Welsh Government's budget, of course, is 15 to 16 billion, and they are constrained in any event in what they can do with it by the obvious things that have to be funded by any government. The element of discretion in the Welsh budget is inevitably very limited, although that will certainly uh, become greater when we do actually get tax devolution in two years' time, and then there will be more options that uh, the elected politicians of Wales will be able to choose from amongst in A, the levels of taxation, uh, and, and B, uh, what we do with it. But the background to this budget is, of course, set out in what the Cabinet Secretary says about the policy of the UK government. He says, if the UK government continues in its present path, we face a further extension in a period of austerity already unprecedented in <coughs> length and, and depth. Uh, he also says in the same paragraph in this statement, a report from the Chief Economist for Wales about future public finances and our economic prospects shows some stark messages. You, you would... Uh, the, the one message that I get from the, the, uh, the pack that came with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, do the, the document with all the details about the budget in it today, the Chief Economist report, um, has at the end of it on page 27 this from the Office for Budget Responsibility. Uh, new unfunded giveaways would take the government further away from its medium-term fiscal objective and only add to the longer-term challenges. In many recent fiscal events, giveaways today have been financed by the promise of takeaways tomorrow. The risk there, of course, is that tomorrow never comes. Uh, from the way in which the Welsh Government speaks about uh, the economy, anybody would think that spending bills never come home to roost. Well, we've been down that dolorous path many, many times in the course of my lifetime. Eventually, the chickens do come home to roost, and you have to be able to pay back the money that you borrow. Very often, of course, the payback time comes when it's extremely inconvenient, indeed sometimes impossible to do so. Once a government loses its credit rating and its ability to borrow at reasonable rates, then those who suffer most in those circumstances, all historical precedent shows this, are those actually who are the most vulnerable in society. I give away to my credit. Hasn't the Conservative government at Westminster already lost its AAA rating? Yes, I, I, it has. I'm glad to have that reinforcement uh, of, of the point that, that I'm making. It's as a result of, uh, of profligacy in, in recent years uh, uh, that uh, uh, the government has lost its AAA rating. I gave the figures... I gave the figures in my questions earlier on to the First Minister. Now we, we now have a national debt of £2 trillion a year. It's costing us nearly £60 billion a year to finance it. The money that we are spending on debt interest is money which would otherwise have been available to spend upon real frontline public services. So the idea that you can borrow forever and never have to worry about how to finance it is fantasy economics, as the people of Venezuela 
uh, Zimbabwe and many other countries know to their cost. Uh, and therefore, it's perhaps fortunate that the Welsh Government doesn't really have any extensive borrowing powers uh, and that they don't have full responsibility for the budgets over which they preside. Would, would because if we, they were able to do that, then they might replicate some of the worst examples in the British Government since the war. So all talk of austerity actually is very misplaced. We've had the opposite of austerity for the last seven years. It's just that we are paying the price for years and years before that of massive overspending on the basis that tomorrow never comes. Uh, so uh, so that, that, that is the reality of life. Oh, sorry, we I'm have to well. pay eventually for overspending. We cannot go on overspending forever. I give way. Uh, I, I th thank you, Neil, for giving way. I just wanted to make the observation that Moody's, in their downgrading about a fortnight ago of the credit rating of the UK, they've also positively ascribed that to the very specific issue of uncertainty over Brexit. Mm. And I wonder if he has any comments to make on that. The downgrading from Moody's, they have d directly ascribed to uncertainty over Brexit. Uh, I don't think I shall get tempted, uh, Slavik, uh, to, to go down the byways of Brexit in, 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 in the budget debate. But I want to deal also with the point which, uh, which comes out of, of, of the statement uh, and, and uh, the, uh, the, the outline proposals of the budget, what the, the Cabinet Secretary says about the deal between the UK Government and Northern Ireland, because it's inevitable in these circumstances that a price is going to be extracted uh, for their political support. Exactly the same thing has happened in this chamber between Labour and Plaid Cymru. Uh, the, for Northern Ireland, there is an extra billion pounds a year, and good luck to them. I wish we could do that as well. If only Plaid Cymru had played the positive role at Westminster, which the uh, Democratic Unionists had played, uh, 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 they might be able today to crow about extra money for the Welsh Government too. But, 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 but uh, uh, I appreciate that their views on, on Brexit are very different from, from those of the Government. But I don't think it lies in the mouth of Welsh ministers to complain about what has happened at Westminster when they are responsible for exactly the same kind of deal here in Cardiff. Uh, and uh, I mean, I do actually welcome the role which Plaid Cymru has pay, played in the development of a part of this budget. I think it is a good thing that uh, all parties of this House should work together in, in these ways. And that, I think, is what the people of Wales expect of us as well. Um, I, I, I know that the, uh, the, the future is not going to be easy. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary did refer in the course of his statement to the prospect of unallocated uh, cuts by the Chancellor of the Exchequer for the year 2020, and we don't know as yet to what extent those cuts are going to fall upon areas of devolved policy. If, if they uh, fall in areas like defence, which I think is unlikely, then we will get off lightly. If they fall on health and education or something like that, then we will suffer very substantially indeed, possibly, and I, I would very much regret that. But I'm afraid that the reality of the economic circumstances in which we have to live is that we'll need to get used to this for the foreseeable future. We could all wish that we had an unlimited bank account, but no government can possibly have that. The trajectory upon which the national debt is now set is for it to fall as a proportion of GDP, and that is actually the only way in which sustainable public finances can be preserved for the future. Uh, we could all wish that every year would be easier but once you get debt levels down, they do become easier. The, the first Blair government certainly understood this because the national debt figure that they inherited in 1997 was preserved because they maintained Ch Kenneth Clark's tight policies, fiscal policies, when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer for the first administration in order to get themselves elected for the second time. They actually finished the first Blair uh, period of office with a lower national debt than that with which they started. But then uh, Gordon Brown embarked on a totally different tra trajectory for the next two parliaments with the catastrophe that we all ended up with in 2010 and the inheritance of the Conservative government, which it's still trying to grapple with today. I believe they could have been tougher uh, in the way that they, uh, th that they treated the public finances. We have proposed uh, cuts to the non-humanitarian part of the aid budget to help in that. We've proposed, of course, getting out of the EU, which will enable us to reduce public spending. Uh, and uh, uh, the future is bright. 
uh, actually outside the European Union. Look at the investments which have been taking place in Britain or have been announced by big firms such as Muller, £100 million, just a couple of weeks ago. Dyson, uh, also £3 billion in his technology park, and so on and so forth. I believe that the future can be bright for Wales, but only with a government that understands the importance of entrepreneurship to raise the tax base in this country by raising the economic potential and productive capacity with which the, the taxes uh, uh, which we will need to spend in the future can, can be raised. And I see no sign of that, sadly, from this Welsh Labour government. So we will not be supporting this budget in due course, but I very much look forward to going through it on a line-by-line -line basis in the Finance Committee and indeed in, chambers, in, the, in this chamber in the months ahead. Mike Hedges.